discussing this in detail with you, Mr. President, because I think that if we work together, we have a shot. And we have been discussing that, and it is something that is very different, hasn't been discussed before, and it's actually a much bigger deal, a much more important deal in a sense. Uh, it would take in many, many countries, and it would cover a very large territory. So uh, I didn't know you were going to be mentioning that, but that's now that you did. I think it's a terrific thing, and I think we have some pretty good cooperation from people that in the past would never, ever have even thought about doing this. So we'll see how that works. Yeah. So as you can see, I'm not done with the Abraham Accord yet. I've been digging deeper and my mind is completely boggled. This is a very complicated and deep issue. And it has a lot to do with things slowly happening, relevant to history and faith, inner faith. And I will show you that in this video. Please bear with me. Grab a cup of coffee and tea. I will leave the links below for your own research. I'll just kind of touch the surface a little bit. Otherwise, this will be too much information all at once. And it will also be a very long video. <laughs> so well, I'm going to give it my best shot here. And uh, hopefully it will be clear what I'm trying to say. So here we have, if you listen to the video, you heard them say many lands, many countries, that sort of thing, okay? And I'm showing you a map here of the covenant with Abraham, okay? It's Abram in, uh, I guess that's what they say in Hebrew. And <laughs> anyway... You saw in the other video that I did in the Abraham Accords why they named it that. It was all mutually faith-based. Now, so this is where the covenant was in Genesis 15, 18 through 21. And we have here, first we have this hook, if you notice. We have the Euphrates River that goes down through here which also encompasses a little bit of Babylon. I believe that uh, Midian, where the Mecca is, is in here somewhere, maybe this way more. And then we have the Nile River, which encompasses Egypt and Sinai. This bottom border here was not really issued according to these scriptures. So they just kind of drew a random line. And the thing is, is that they just said in the desert, right, to the south. So they just kind of drew this line here. But what I want to point out to you is the shekel. Now let's see if I can get them both together here. So we have the 10 of world shekel, okay? that was until 2017, I just found out. But this is the backside. Here you have the menorah, and then you have a body of land behind the menorah on this. You notice the hook here. This is the same map. This should be the Euphrates River. This is kind of, I don't know, a little lopsided or something. And then they went down into the desert, encompassing part of Egypt and Sinai in here. So for Israel, it's the they don't really have a border. So if you have the you look at the Orthodox Jews, they don't believe in the borders, right? So they don't mind, they don't see the West Bank and Gaza as West Bank and Gaza, and they've actually not liked those borders and what Israel has been doing there because they really believe that people should live together and accept one another. And um, so they don't recognize the borders. They recognize the Abraham covenant. Okay? So this is a covenant. The Abraham Accords is a covenant. Okay. I want to point that out. So then we look at uh, 
Daniel chapter 11 verse 39 it says thus shall he do in the most strong holes with a strange God whom he shall acknowledge and increase with glory and he shall cause them to rule over many and shall divide the land for gain and this will make a lot more sense later but I wanted you to over many that was a key word there in that video right now I'm going to point you to the temple coin. I did a video, a short video on the temple coin a while ago when it first came out. Here we have President Trump. We have King Cyrus the Great. We have a lion as the symbol for Persian Empire, which is interesting because we also are known as the little lions because we came out of the British Empire and then here we have the eagle and you notice the sword on the lion there's some a lot of symbolism here then we have the peace dove and the olive tree with the temple coin and the picture of the temple and it says here like doves to their nest and they quoted Isaiah 60 verse 8 the reason why I point this out is it's all on faith the peace dove so this coin was produced as an expression of immense joy and gratitude to President Trump following the announcement that the American Embassy will be transferred to Jerusalem in honor of Israel's 70th Independence Day purchase one of these unique coins and be a part of this historical and divine process towards the rebuilding of the third temple in Jerusalem. So who was Cyrus? At the National Geographic it says, Cyrus went down in history as one of the most benevolent conquerors of all time, allowing his subjects to live and worship as they pleased. So you have to understand, I'm going to go back here to this map, that the Israelites were held under bondage and sent over to Babylon under under King Nebuchadnezzar's reign and they basically became slaves and the Lord told them just to live have children till the land they're gonna be there for a while well King Cyrus when he conquered his land this land okay he also conquered Babylon. So King Cyrus conquered all this land that I'm, the brown, all the way up through India. There's the Indus. There's all these areas, Saudi Arabia, Persia, Yemen, UAE. Okay, up through here, the Black Sea, Lydia, not the green area. This was King Cyrus's reign. And he allowed the Jews to go all the way and leave Babylon to Jerusalem to build the second temple. As you know, you can read and research about on your own. But that was a long trek. It's not that short. All right, so they referred him, President Trump, as Cyrus. How did King Cyrus, it says here, subjects, allowing his subjects, he was a king, to live and worship as they pleased. So what's going on with this Abrahamic initiative? Okay. Let's go on, and I'm going to show you a video with the Pope. During the Pope's historic trip as the first pontiff to the UAE for the Human Fraternity Meeting, a document on human fraternity was drafted, along with the Sunni Imam al Tayeb. The five-page document is broken down in various parts, touching on some of the plagues of the current time and what unites humanity. It seems he meant the new page part quite literally, as from February 4th forward, a new fraternity may have been found between these two religions. And they're signing this document of human fraternity for world peace. And they're 
um, establishing this Abraham house of worship, this center. And there will be three uh, places of worship. A mosque, a Christian church, and a Jewish synagogue. Here you can see them signing the foundation stone for um, whichever one that is. So it's very important that we don't lose sight of the idea that the peace deal and Donald Trump deal of the century is also being administered by Pope Francis. He saw the video with the Pope. Did you notice the term human fraternity? Here is a document from the human fraternity. So he did this, uh, I thought he did this one video, the video that I have was in Baran, which is one of the, uh, the covenants that was signed with the Abrahamic Accord. But the, the human fraternity, this document came out of Rome, where the Pope is, <laughs> for world peace and living together. So faith leads a believer to see in the other um, brother or sister to be supported and loved. The whole idea of this is they had open discussions. So this, I want you to pay attention to some of this wording here because it will come together when I show you the Abraham coin. We did this by considering scientific and technical progress, therapeutic achievements, the digital era, the mass media and communications. Interesting. Okay, I will show you. Well, maybe I'll show you that right now. Here is the back of the coin here where they have the sword. And this is like a an Islamic sword, by the way. You could tell by the way it's built. It's like the um, swords that they used during the Ottoman Empire. And the beads. You have beads and you have a crown. But what do we have in this sword? We have technology, we have data, we have science, okay, we have medical, we have the syringes, we have the peace dove, then interesting, we have Saturn, Saturn, maybe that would be something to be looked into later, here's the front of it, we have the eagle symbol with the peace dove and the arrows okay so back to whoop, where I was they reflected also on the level of poverty conflict and suffering of so many brothers and sisters in different parts of the world as a consequence of the arms race social injustice corruption inequality moral decline terrorism discrimination, extremism, and many other causes. So the meeting expressed profound hope in the bright future for all human beings. The idea of this document on human fraternity was conceived. It is a text that has been given honest and serious thought to be a joint declaration of good and heartfelt aspirations. It is a document that invites all persons who have faith in God and faith in human fraternity to unite and work together so they may serve as a guide for future generations to advance a culture of mutual respect in the awareness of the great divine grace that makes us all human beings brothers and sisters. Now, I just want to admit to you that when I saw the video and I saw the, you know, proposed three faith building structures, that it made me excited to want to go there. I, I loved being in Jerusalem. In the old city, it's divided into four quarters, the Armenian quarter, we have the Jewish quarter, the Christian quarter, and the Muslim quarter. And it was really nice to walk through all those cultures, all the cultures, all the languages, and all the historic um, sites, okay? So 
it's a great deception, right? It looks good. And it feels good. And it sounds right. We all want peace. We're all, including us, believers. We're tired of poverty, conflict, and suffering. We do see each other as brothers and sisters. I mean, and, and we don't want to be discriminatory towards people who are blind. We need to be compassionate, as Jesus was, for he, God wants all to come to him, though. That's the thing. It's a different God, maybe, and it's a different Jesus. They all recognize Jesus like as a great prophet. They don't recognize him as Jesus was God in the flesh. And um, so, you know, you, I'm going to leave the link. You can go on and read this document. All right. It's really interesting. It's a blending of the interfaith movement. So now I'm going to have you uh, go on. And you're going to listen to a Kushner video. Welcome to the 2019 Peace to Prosperity Workshop. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage the senior advisor to the President of the United States, Jared Kushner. The Peace to Prosperity vision is a modern framework for a brighter and more prosperous future. It is a vision of what is possible with peace the freedom for people to worship without persecution. The goal of this workshop is to begin thinking about these challenges in a new way. Let's try to view this conflict and the potential of the entire region through a different lens and work together to develop a concrete plan to try and achieve it. For a moment, imagine a new reality in the Middle East. Imagine a bustling commercial and tourist center in Gaza and the West Bank where international businesses come together and thrive. Imagine the West Bank as a blossoming economy full of entrepreneurs, engineers, scientists, and business leaders. Imagine people and goods flowing quickly and securely throughout the region as economics become more integrated and people become more prosperous. This isn't a right plan and we need to create the right environment. While we endeavor to create the framework, the hope from this workshop is that we will be able to freely and constructively discuss the different ideas, get peer feedback, modify, and then ultimately finalize a vision as a globally supported plan. So since I know a lot of people here like to start with the numbers, uh, we go with a, a program that's about a $50 billion program. This comes from grants, which is about $13 billion. This is all done over 10 years. Then we do subsidized loans, about $25 billion, and we have the private capital, about $11 billion. If you know Okay, so that was the Abrahamic Faiths Initiative. <laughs> this is on the whitehouse.gov, and I will leave a link. This was in January 16, 2020. Oh, I just want to point out the this other document here was 3rd of February 2019. So this one was when the coronavirus first started merging. So this is a remarkable gathering of faith leaders organized by a U.S. nonprofit organization, the Multi-Faith Neighbors Network, MFNN, under the leadership of, um, it was, con it, sorry, which convened 25 senior global religious leaders representing a range of Jewish, Christian, and Muslim community for a two-day uh, two dialogue in Rome, and it was inspired by Pope Francis and Al Zahar, Grand Imam, Al Tayyib's 2019 document on human fraternity for world peace and living together, the document that I just referred you to. So that is more all faith, and I want you to keep this in mind. Okay? It's a lot here, guys. Uh, this next tab, this is from Peace to Prosperity in January 2020, is what Kushner was all about. 
And this is also on the whitehouse.gov. It includes the political framework. Um, and here's Jerusalem. So the United States recognizes the heightened sensitivity surrounding Jerusalem in a city which means so many. Jerusalem in a, is a city unique in the history of civilization. No other place on earth can claim significance to the three major religions. Each day, Jews pray at the Western Wall, Muslims bow in the prayer at the Alaska Mosque. Notice, like if you look at my other video, they didn't include the Al Haram Sharif, and Christians worship at the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, which is in another area. It's not on the Temple Mount. It's all inner faith. Remember. Right? I will leave a link, like I said. Let's look at Daniel 8. Now I don't want to go into all of Daniel 8. It's a vision of the ram and the goat. As it came near to the place in verse 17, where I was standing, I was terrified and fell prostrate. Son of man, he said to me, understand that the vision concerns the time of the end. And I just wanted to point that out, this chapter 11. It says, well, later in the time of wrath, because a vision occurs at a pointed time of the end. He says it again. The two-horned ram that you saw represents the kings of Media and Persia. So remember, Media is where Mecca is. Persia it relates to King Cyrus or the Persian Empire. So the goat became very great. By the height of its power, the large horn was broken off, and in its place, four prominent horns, those four kingdoms, grew up toward the four winds of heaven. He watched the ram as it charged towards the west and the north and the south. No animal could stand against it. No one could rescue from its power. It did as it pleased and became great. You know, this is like talking about the Antichrist. One of them came another horn, which started small but grew in power to the south and to the east and toward the beautiful land, which is always Israel. It grew until it reached the host of heavens. It threw some of the starry hosts down to the earth and trampled on them, which is interesting. And it set itself up to be as great as the commander of the army of the Lord. You know, that's Antichrist. Took away the daily sacrifice from the Lord and his sanctuary was thrown down. Because of rebellion, the Lord people and the daily sacrifice was given over it. It prospered in everything it did. The truth was thrown to the ground. It's like, it's not there. There was no truth in it. Anyway, I wanted to point out Daniel chapter 8 for you to chew on. But another religious deal here is from the Institute for Global Engagement. They call it that, but they have Freedom of Faith Matters. And this is like a big deal. Okay, it's an international deal. You see they have the interfaith here, all loving each other. And that's great, really. You know, we people are beautiful. God's creation is beautiful. It goes about women Talks about business, economy, think of the sword, okay? And that is what Kushner is talking about, the economy. It will help build the economy. And that, with that, creates peace and security. You need to care about freedom of faith. So let's look at Daniel chapter 9. So... Here we have the 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression. We all know what the holy city is about and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for inequity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophesy and to anoint the most holy. Verse 25, there, know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and build Jerusalem unto the Messiah the Prince shall be given seven weeks. 
and three score and two weeks the street will be built again and the wall and even in troublous times. So, and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week and in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease as I read in chapter 8. And for the overspreading of abominations he shall make it desolate even until the consummation and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. So these are things here. It's interesting, right? And here is the temple coin. I mean the Abraham Accord coin. We have here, it's the different colors. A lot of the flags in the Middle East are all these colors. Look at all the you know, kind of city skylines. And then I talk to you about the sword. And he shall judge among the nations, and they shall beat their swords into plows, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. And we know that's a scripture about the returning of the real Messiah. This is a silhouette of the city of Jerusalem, Israel's eternal capital. Interesting. And Abu Dhabi skyline. So, eternal capital. Immediately below is a skyline, the words Abraham Accord. Inspired by the Words of the prophet Isaiah, the back of the metal features a sword that gradually morphs into symbols of peace, prosperity, agricultural, and technological advancement. The commemorative coin also features quotes from the Quran and the prophet Jeremiah encapsulating moral duty to seek out and embrace peace. The eagle holding the olive branch and arrows, the seal of the President of the United States. So I hope this all helped you, and God bless you. Please pass this along. If you have any input, let me know.